Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <coughs> Today I'm going to start the topic the discoordination compounds and their application, their usage, in fact, in medicinal chemistry, you know. Previously we have looked into what are the coordination compounds, how they are synthesized, what they are produced, you know. Then I have tried to explain the use of compound for the preparation of uh, metal-based dyes for the uh, textile industry. Today I am going to look into the coordination compounds and their importance, their valuable usage in medicinal chemistry. Let me explain again a little <coughs> about the uh, coordination compounds. As I have told you, the central metal atom it is supposed to be uh, Lewis acid, you know, connected with some ligands which are supposed to be Lewis bases. What they actually do, they donate lone pair of electrons, you know, the ligands donate lone pair of electron to the central metal atom and those ligands, they could be more than one, you know, ligands around the central metal atoms giving lone pair of electrons. Okay, so it's a combination of a Lewis system and a Lewis base. This metal, which is a central metal atom, it is supposed to be some sort of a transition metal, you know, and the ligands are supposed to be some, some sort of a species, it could be some sort of a neutral species, like, <coughs> like water molecule, like ammonia molecule, having lone pairs, and many others are available as well or it could be some sort of a anions, you know, but is having negative charges, and they could act as ligand as well, you know. Many others are available even in organic in nature, you know, somebody having this sort of, they could act as the ligands. So this is how the basics about the uh, coordination compounds. What is <coughs> important to know about the coordination compounds? There must be some sort of a central metal atom accompanied by some sort of ligands, you know. This is called complex sign. Sometimes there are available some sort of species having negative charges, chloride, bromides, and some others are available. They are called the counter ions. Counter ions. How many positives are present over here? plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, same sort of negative species are supposed to be. Let's say we have plus 3, we need to have negatives as threes as well. So counter ions are to balance the negative and positive charges. And as a whole, this whole entity, this is called coordination compound. Current coordination compound, you know. So this is how the coordination compounds are produced. The central metal atom, we do have an idea, they are supposed to be electropositives, mm -hmm. having positive charges on them. Let's 
associated is connected with central metal is connected with number of ligands you know uh, let, let, let's write the other way now you, you got the message so then I can write this way six ligands are available the number of ligands available will be called as coordination number number of ligands connected to the central metal atom that will be called as a coordination number of the metal you know it is supposed to show two types of valencies the primary valency and the secondary valency primary valency mean it's 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 oxidation state one is called primary valency and that represents actually the oxidation state you know the secondary valency secondary valency that represents coordination number that is coordination number so secondary valency means the coordination number the primary valency means the oxidation state let's say we have used central metal atom let's say it's a cobalt it has plus three oxidation state okay so it has to be counterbalanced by three negatives so we can bring in some three negative like this one so plus three means it's a plus three so we should have something somebody is having a negative charge and they are also three so negative three positive three has to be balanced so that is the coordination compounds involved the central metal atoms which shows primary valencies as well as secondary valencies you know those primary valencies which are in fact their oxidation state are to be balanced by the counter items counter ions you know if it's a plus two there should be negative two if the plus three there should be negative three and so on and so forth so it's a basic idea about the coordination compounds their coordination number their primary valency, their secondary valency, and their oxidation state. You know, this is a brief about this ones. <clears throat> Let's say one can write the other way as well. If somebody writes like this, what does it mean then? You know. Plus three, uh, sorry, Cl three mean this body would have been cobalt would have been in plus three state has been counterbalanced by minus three. You know that is the basic difference. And then let's say somebody writes the other way around. We have a cobalt again. We have NH3s, which are five. Then we have given one chloro, and then we are writing three chloros again. You know, so it means five, and then one six means six is the coordination number of this body. Means it is something cobalt having six ligands. What the ligands are? Five ammonias. and one is chloride you know and then definitely it would have been counterbalanced by counterbalanced by cl3s means their cobalt is in the form of plus 3 mean plus 3 is here 
which has been balanced by CL3. You know, in both cases, we have a three outside. Whatever the ligand ratio is inside, we don't have an issue with that. We It means this cobalt is supposed to be in plus three oxidation state, which is being balanced by this body, okay? So it can also be few people come up with another type of ligand, they bring four ammonias, two chlorides, and then again, they have this one. So again, I think you have got the idea that four ammonias, two chlorides means six, so it has got six coordination number. Six ligands are available around. So it means it has a coordination number that is six. Okay, however, what is over here, what is outside the bracket is a three, means three chlorides, three negatives. That means it would have been in positive three state, you know, which we write, used to write over here, something like that. So this is how you can imagine from the uh, formula of any um, given coordination compound, you can imagine what is the coordination number and what is the oxidation state, you know. This is how one can predict. Now I give you one more example. So over here, this ammonia can donate only one lone pair. This ammonia can donate one lone pair. So this body who can donate one lone pair is supposed to be monovalent. Monovalent, okay? The ligand which can donate only one pair of electron or it can make coordinate covalent bond with the central metal atom through only one specific uh, part, you know, then it is monovalent. Once I've given you another example like this. I used an organic compound having two amino groups, something like that. So both of the amines are connected to the same alkane unit, you know. So this is the compound where two group of atoms are available which can donate electrons. So that is why they can connect with the central metal through different positions. So it is supposed to be a divalent. It is supposed to be a divalent ligand, you know because it can coordinate through two different positions. Two donors are available on the same molecules. Over here, only one donor is available. So it's a, some sort of a monovalent and a divalent uh, concepts about the ligands and their capacity to donate electron to the central metal atoms, you know. And this is how they do. <clears throat> Let me give you an example very famous compound for you guys, you know, uh, you guys have an idea about it. Similarly, we can write negative charges or they could after dissociations so we have a more than more than one uh, position where donor electrons are available you know they can donate electrons to the uh, central metal atoms what the sites are we have an idea about the lone pair of the nitrogens. So one, two sites are available. We have a negative oxygen, one, two, three, and then we have a four. So it's, it's a sort of a compound which can donate electron to the central metal atom through six different uh, sites, you know. So it is supposed to be hexavalent. 
and this compound's name is EDTA. You can get what is the actual name, what is the extended name of this compound. You would have an idea that you can get that from the uh, internet or from your book, you know. It's a complexing agent that is called EDTA. So this is how those uh, complex molecules, complex compounds, they have more than one sites for the donation of electrons to the central metal atoms. So they are called divalent, trivalent, tetravalent and also hexavalents are available as I have given you an example of a very a important compound that is called EDTA and an unknown complexing agent, you know. It is frequently used for the preparation of uh, coordination compounds. So this is about the coordinations, oxidation state, coordination number, ligands and their potential to donate a lone pair of electron to the central metal atoms. Now let me give you examples of few more ligands which are actually important in respect of medicinal chemistry, you know. Ligands for medicinal compounds. We have an idea the medicinal compounds actually are prepared from the coordination compounds of the organic components, from the organic molecules, especially those carries nitrogen atoms, carries amines, you know. So they are used. Otherwise, other compounds having lone pairs available in uh, organic structures when they form complexes with the central metal atoms, such compounds become bioactive in nature. They are actually the ligands, they are actually the coordination compounds as well as they are biologically active. That is why they become uh, medicinal compounds, medicinally important. Let me give you one or two examples in that respect as well. <clears throat> what sort of uh, ligands actually being used for the preparation of uh, medicinally important compounds. The compounds which are medicinally important do involve different types of ligands. Few of the important known ligands do include, you know, this sort of structure that is triphenylphosphine. triphenylphosphine that is important compound for the preparation of medicinal compound, you know. We have a simply pyridine. It can act as a complexing agent because of the presence of the nitrogen in the ring as well. Nitrogen's presence make the compounds biologically active and this nitrogen has the ability to donate electron as well. So it's a pyridine. Complexing of the central metal atom with pyridines could give us important uh, compounds of biological importance, you know. Similarly, there's a compound called triphenyl arsine. Triphenyl arsine, three rings, benzene rings are connected to the arsine, you know. So this is one of the, they are actually the ligands, you know. Why they are ligands? They have the ability to generate electron, lone pair of electron. So they are, they can coordinate with central metal atoms as 
Lewis basis. The Martels could act as Lewis asserts, and together they can give us, you know. Then we can have something like compounds carrying midazoles. Yes, nitrogens are available. We have a lone pair at this carbon, the carbon in the ring. Some sort of this one. And we have two nitrogens in the ring. And the nitrogens are do connected with the aromatic rings as well. Very important compound. They are called N heterocyclic. Carbenes. They are called carbenes because this carbon carries lone pair, you know, and its valence is not filled yet. Such compounds are called carbenes. Another compound that is frequently used as well. called tricyclohexylphosphine tricyclohexylphosphine these are not the benzene rings you know they are cyclic rings alkane cyclic alkane six membered rings but not the benzene rings. This is a few of, I've given you a few examples of the uh, ligands which are frequently used as organic ligands. Let's say I've given you example of this body, triphenylphosphine. Yes, you can coordinate with cobalt, you know. one ligand, you can bring in another triphenylphosphine, I can write PHS for phenyl, you know, then we can have another similarly, one, two, three, four, five, six, we can have six ligands available around triphenylphosphines are available. If we bring in the contrines as their three chlorides, mean this cobalt is in plus three state, so it will be counterined by three chloros, and this resulting whole compound will be a sort of, you know, coordination compounds, as the compound do carry so many number of uh, aromatic rings. There is a presence of resonance within the molecule. So such molecules which also carry some heteroatoms, atoms other than carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfurs, they become biologically active, they become medicinally important. So that is why we call them medicinally important biological compounds, you know. Similarly, <coughs> we have idea about the uh, somebody is having a negative charges, you know, or somebody is having lone pair of electron. This is very important. This is called furon, tetrahydrofuron. Tetrahydrofuron, that is called THF, it's a commonly used solvent in organic chemistry. People do utilize its lone pair available on oxygen 
to coordinate with central metal atom to prepare, you know, uh, coordination compounds by complexing them in different ratios. You can have all molecules of tetrahydrofuran, you can have chlorides, you can have amines around. So this is how they could be and then finally you need to bring in counter ion as well that is x negative in x numbers you know x negative in x numbers that could act as a counter ion the resultant compound will be a sort of uh, coordination compound as we have heterocyclics of involved in the formation of uh, coordination compounds. So the resulting coordination compound is supposed to be medicinally important. That could be biologically active, you know. Why the retrocycles? Because it's a cyclic compound. Yes, cyclic compound. And in this case, one of the oxy carbon has been replaced with oxygen. So presence of oxygen, that is an heteroatom, the compound, this compound becomes an heterocyclic. This is an heterocycle. So once you use them for the preparation of coordination compound in different amounts, two heterocycles, three heterocycles, four heterocycles, or six heterocycles around a central metal atom. Next time, let's say once you are using cobalt, you can prepare one biologically active coordination compound. In next time you can change the metal, just changing of the metal can bring in Fe. Okay, so if you bring in Fe and you, you do utilize that for the formation of coordination compound, the coordination compound which was synthesized using cobalt and the coordination compound synthesized using iron, they would both have a different physiochemical properties. Al <coughs> although your ligands and counter ions are same or again you can keep the metal same but you can change one or two ligands. Let's keep two hydrofurons, tetrahydrofurons, two chlorides, you can bring in two ammonias. In next other compound you can bring other ammonia number three, keep one chloro. So you will have a coordination compound number three. Again you can bring in more ammonia. Now this compound will be coordination compound number four. As they carries nitrogen carries carrying entities and heterocyclic carrying entities, all those coordination compounds prepared from the same metals or from the same ligands, but in different ratios. They will have their different biological properties, their different antimicrobial, antifungal properties. So that is how the coordination compounds are useful actually for the preparation of medicinally important compounds. In the other way, we can call them as, we can use them uh, for the preparation of uh, bioactive compounds. Bioactive compounds means the compounds which are uh, antifungal in nature, can kill fungus. Those compounds which are antibacterial in nature can work against bacteria, can eliminate bacteria are the compounds have antiviral properties, you know, they can act as an antiviral. So many of the compounds, so many of the coordination compounds have anti-cancerous properties. They are being used as drugs against cancer, you know. There are coordination compounds which are being used against a number of diseases. So that is why the coordination compounds are of immense importance. Once it was thought that the biologically important compounds are supposed to be organic in nature only. They should not carry any metal because the metals are supposed to be poisonous for the human body, for the living organisms due to the involvement of uh, the pollution related issues, uh, the heavy metal contaminations of the biological systems. But with the passage of time, people do realize their importance as well. They thought we can use heavy metals, transition metals for complexation, 
with the other ligands those could be inorganic as well as organics especially if we keep the central metal as a transition metal and we coordinate them with um, organic entities somebody is having heterocyclic entities somebody having nitrogens available lone pair of nitrogens if we utilize those the resulting coordination compounds are supposed to be a bioactive they can show their activity against a number of diseases starting from antibacterial antifungal properties so that is why the coordination compounds are important i've given you a brief intro about the coordination compounds how they are produced i've given you idea about the use of the coordination compound for the preparation of textile dyes and today i've given you an idea about the preparation of biologically active compound using coordination compounds using different uh, ligands especially the ligands which are uh, organic in nature they could serve you well to achieve biologically active coordination compounds so i hope you got the message if you have any question related to today's talk is topic you may ask uh, me approach by approaching through whatsapp or you put your question in the comments area i will be happy to respond inshallah thank you very much for your time and attention uh, assalamu alaikum